It's a bridge. Okay, bye. Oh, God, Jesus. Okay, um, hold on. <clears throat> <laughs> Snom, I like to think that for you to input text on your phone, you just flop on it like a fish. Thank. That's exactly what I do. Ah, uh, here you go, buddy. All right. Put the sad in the bag. Put it in! Snom. How do you remain happy? I don't know. Opinion on LGBTQ people? They're all amazing and wonderful. I'm glad they are being true to who they want to be and liking who they want to like. Piggy Snob. Are you Snom? I am. Will you be? For eternity. Snom, I love you! Ha <laughs> ha! Parried! Hey Snom, do you have any of those good vibes and cozy positive energies I need them? And some inspiration would be nice. Imagine being in a nice cabin with the fireplace slowly crackling, gentle music flowing through the air, being surrounded by a soft, warm blanket, and the people you love. How dare you make the perfect image, Snom? Do you pay your taxes? Answer carefully. I'm not old enough yet. What's your opinion on the Charizard that belongs to Leon, the unbeatable champion? The hand symbol for its head looks like it's making a wang sound. I'm not wrong. Opinions on Legos? Behold, Fort. Has uh, any Pokemon fan art ever scar ya? I prefer not to answer. Snom, it is time for the ultimate test. What is two plus two? Uh, 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 I'm just kidding, it's four. Aw, uh, Snom's already smarter than Gura. If you could tell everyone in the entire world one thing right now, what would you say? <gasps> You're all beautiful people and I believe in each and every one of you! <laughs> you know, Jimmy, while I can't say that you've never been responsible for helping out the town, you also created or influenced the vast majority of major threats in the first place. The Yokians only came to Retroville because of your signal. The same goes for Meldar Prime, the Nanobots, Shirley, and Evil Jimmy were all your creations. You caused the Ice Age. You created the Sentient Pants. You made the Sick Patch. You turned your teacher into a 50-foot monstrosity, and you injured Santa Claus, almost ruining Christmas. The vast majority of this town's problems are caused, at least indirectly, by you. And you know what? In all honesty, that would be fine. You are very intelligent, and you always do fix it. And in the end, it's extremely unlikely that you won't end up benefiting the world a lot more than you will damage it. My children and my children's children are probably going to live in a world free of war and disease, and I'll have to thank you for that. But fuck, dude. You can't keep using your intelligence as a way to escape your humanity. I didn't ask you to say salt because I thought a customer would seriously care or because I was insecure. I did it because it made you look weird, and I was trying to get you to adopt behaviors and use language that makes you come across like a normal fucking person. Everyone knows what sodium chloride is, but calling it that outside the context of a chemistry class makes you seem like someone who defines themselves solely by their intelligence, which is undeniably who you are. I know you think there's nothing wrong with being that person, dude, but there is. Taking your IQ and deciding that it elevates you above the rest of the planet is an awful decision that will lead to a life filled with misery and alienation. It will color every interaction you ever have and make it impossible to have real friends or relationships. I'm not saying that you won't have any, but they won't hold any meaning to you, and they certainly won't bring you any happiness. Sure, you'll probably manage a pity fuck or two your sophomore year of college after giving some drunk sorority girl a jetpack ride, but it will bring you nothing but emptiness. Maybe you'll eventually abandon women altogether and decide that your true love is science, secretly seething inside whenever you see a guy like Nick or Bulby getting married to someone he really cares about. Who cares about him? You'll say I'm exaggerating, but dude, look at how you treat the people in your life now. 
Carl and Sheen, quirks aside, really do see you as your friend. And they go through some serious shit if it meant helping you out of a scrape. Can you say that you see them the same way? As anything other than the only two kids your age willing to put up with your ridiculous ego? What have you ever done for them? Inventing doesn't count, dude. Even when you build something for someone else, you're really doing that for you. Every llama bot or ultra lore simulator is only created with the expectation of further praise. They're not friends to you, they're worshipers. And your parents? Lord, the way you treat them. You think I've got folks that care about me the way your mom and dad do working in a shithole like this? I wish. Every day your dad watches you scarf down the dinner your mom's slave to make for you and prays that you might think about spending some fucking time with him instead of disappearing in your lab to do God knows what. They watch you toy with dimensional warping science that they can't wrap their minds around on a daily basis and you laugh at them for worrying about you. Have you ever played catch with your dad, Jimmy? Ever asked him how his day at work was? You don't have a clue what I'd do for a dad like yours in my life, dude. And what about your mom? Why not invent something that'll make her life easier instead of gallivanting around the Bermuda Triangle to play with fucking seaweed? We both know the reason. She would thank you for it. She'd be happy to imagine a version of you that thought for an instant about the needs of another person. But she wouldn't call you the greatest thing in the universe for it like your friends do. And in Neutron's world, whoever doesn't do that might as well not exist. Ignore me if you want. Keep going the way you're going. And I'll see you in 30 years, lugging around 16 Nobel Prizes in your pocket as if they could substitute for a lifetime's worth of human love and interaction. You always mocked Calamitis for his inability to finish what he started, but the man had a wife and a daughter that tolerated him enough to want to stay in his life through everything. And at the rate you're going, I'd be amazed if you can manage the same with Goddard. The rest of Retroville Jimmy, they'll never be able to do what you do. They'll never be able to invent rockets or solve cold fusion or add three numbers together, but they will find genuine friendship and love, and they will call it salt. And despite everything you accomplish, you'll only be remembered as nothing more than the man who wouldn't, who couldn't perhaps. Get out, dude. You're fired. Big McThankies from McSpankies. <laughs> POV You're scrolling through Tumblr instead of facing your problems like a normal human being. You watch your mouth. Would you guys like to see the most unique, rare, and blessed photo I've ever taken? It's his day now. Beautiful. If the CIA believed we could go to alternate realities, we would have invaded one of them by now. You joke, but that's honestly entirely true! A CIA-backed coup of fairyland. We are being gonna shift to the oil dimension. I mean, to be fair, I'm fairly certain they've tried. I'm what you would consider, I could look it up, but it's more fun asking friends, gang. Uh, yeah. Has it been canonically determined if the Kool-Aid man is the pitcher or the juice yet? According to Wikipedia, canonically, he is the pitcher. He is traditionally filled with tropical punch Kool-Aid, but originally was filled with cherry Kool-Aid. However, he does appear to have some kind of magical effect on liquids, as the Kool-Aid stored inside him is more refreshing and hydrating than normal Kool-Aid, and his tears can apparently cause the dead to reincarnate. Man, Kool-Aid lore is deep. Oh wait, that's sort of mine. What if the reason the creators of Monsters, Inc. waited 12 years to make Monsters University was because kids who watched Monsters, Inc. of the ages 5, 6, and 7 years are now 17, 18, and 19 and off to college? The same goes to Toy Story 3 and how Andy was giving up his toys, his childhood, and moving on off to college as well. What if they wanted to say goodbye to the child that loved their movies properly? I, I think they're onto something here.
I'm in a really bad media diversity class where the professor was trying to make a point to us about stereotypes. So he was like, when you think of Frankenstein, you probably think of a big green monster, right? And then when everyone in class was immediately like, no, it's the scientist, he pretended he didn't hear us. Well, millennial culture is knowing that Frankenstein is the scientist. So, have you fallen in love with me yet, or do I need to post more nonsense? <laughs> God nerfed me by making me allergic to garlic and sunlight. So, a vampire? I can confirm that I am not a vampire, as I have blood. Is it your blood? It is blood, yes. Is it blood that's always belonged to you from the moment of your spawning? It is blood. It is in my possession. Therefore, it is my blood. I do not like this interrogation. Please stop. Oh my god, how do you come up with this stuff? Well, I've been plagued by visions since birth. OP, that's called having eyes. My name isn't OP, it's Monty. And I bet God hasn't even spoken to you once. If you're over 5 foot 11, sorry, your pronouns are fee, fi, fo, and fum. Listen here, you little shit! If you're under 5 foot 11, sorry, your pronouns are oompa, loompa, doopity, and do. Nah, you look a little too young to drive there, kiddo. Shh, you work the gas, human, I'll do the steering. I thought about my fake little people for a bit too long. Now I have illnesses of the brain. <sighs> Same. Oh, well, conveniently wrapped packages of bananas. If only bananas had robust, natural, biodegradable packaging of their own. Some sort of peelable skin, perhaps. Ah, oh, it's just a pipe dream, though. Tumblers and social media. It's a habit. Like smoking. We're all gathering by the dumpster in the cold, reblocking posts. I want to run away. But like in Ghibli movies. Like I take a block of cheese, a loaf of bread, and some apples and wander through the flowered speckled mountains wrapped up in a shawl. And I happen to wander into a moving castle and fall in love with a cute wizard. Me deep in the woods dragging a duffel bag of craft singles and hopelessly lost. Where's Totoro? Fish want me. Women fear me. Men fear me. Everyone fears me, for I am a menace to society. Mm -hmm. Be on the lookout for the big bird bandits. Two men arrested and charged after alleged Sesame Street. All right, which one of you fucking kidnapped Big Bird? I know it was fucking one of you. People of Tumblr, it's World Sleep Day. Log off. Go back to bed. No. I am unable to proceed with the action of Ken. There are too many ghouls! Help me! I know this isn't a hot take or anything, but the amount of stress and anxiety that courses through me while going through a drive-thru is absolutely a match! Behold, Eurasian Eagle Owl Chicks. The laundry is alive, and it is angry! Diagnosed with just been in a kind of weird zone lately disorder, and it's terminal. It's not radiation poisoning. But the night is young. Hey, instead of saying queen or king, can we start saying yes, chef? Like in Hell's Kitchen? You know, when you think about it, How to Train Your Dragon is really just a horse girl movie. <laughs> I'd like to report an incident. What happened this time? Well, wouldn't you like to know? Unfortunately for everybody, I will keep doing whatever I want. All urban fantasy fiction set in present day automatically sucks by refusing to acknowledge that dwarves would go apeshit for Minecraft. I don't know what an NFT is and I'm too afraid to ask. Okay, imagine if you went up to the Mona Lisa and you were like, I'd like to own this. And somebody nearby went, give me $65 million and I'll burn down an unspecified amount of the Amazon forest in order to give you this receipt for purchase. So you paid them and they went, here's your receipt, thank you for your purchase, and went to an unmarked supply closet in the back of the museum and posted a handmade label inside it behind the brooms that said, Mona Lisa currently owned by Jacob Galapagos. So if anyone wanted to know who owns it, they'd have to find this specific closet in this specific hallway and look behind the correct brooms and you went, can I take the Mona Lisa home now? And they went, oh god no, what are you stupid? You only bought the receipt that says you own it. You didn't actually buy the Mona Lisa itself. You can't take the real Mona Lisa, you idiot. You can take this though and give you a replica print and a cardboard tube that's sold in the gift shop. Also, the person selling you the receipt of purchase has at no point in time ever owned the Mona Lisa. Unfortunately, if this doesn't really make sense or seem like any logical person would be happy about this exchange, then you've understood it perfectly. An octopus is just a wet spider. What have you done? I woke up today and chose the H in ADHD. <laughs>
<laughs> Nine out of ten dentists recommend me. Number ten fears me. Ugh, my child is fine. Ma'am, your child kins Kara from Undertale. Oh, you're gay? So which is the builder and which is the redstoner? Today I learned in ancient Thebes there was a fairly successful band of warriors consisting entirely of 150 gay couples. They were chosen based on the idea that you fight better when trying to impress your lover. Me about to lob a spear straight into a guy's heart. Babe, watch this! Oh, what a beautiful night. <gasps> a full moon! Oh no! What does this even- Oh, fuck you!